Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy. And I'm Janet. With you today on a miserable October day. It's, it's warm. It's 60 some degrees and the humidity is 60 some degrees. Yeah, it's gross out. It's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but we are wearing something. <laughs> yes. That's a little bit too warm. Too warm for the day, probably. Yes. But, um, so, Joy, you want to start with yours? My cardigan I talked about in episode 39. It's called the Renly Cardigan by Valerie Hobbs. And I used Nightshades by Harrisville Designs as the yarn. And the color is called Talk Radio. Now, my color is a purplish color. And Janet's is a reddish color. I have no idea if you can tell the difference. I think so. <laughs> Yours think definitely you has see a the reddish. Yeah. And then the only other thing I want to say about it is I got this shawl pin when we were in Mukunji a couple of weeks ago. That looks nice on it. So, and this is exactly why I bought it for this sweater. I guess I can't really do it without something to put it on, but mm -hmm. it is actually two-sided, so I can use either side facing out. And then, but let me tell you, this pin is sharp. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I have to be very careful with it. Mm -hmm. And it's very thin too, so it bends easily. I see it's a little bit bent. Yeah, so I may end up buying another one at some point so that I can... Um... Here. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, and this is another thing. The tip that you put on I'll it, it disappears, it rolls around. I see. <laughs> I've already lost it twice. <laughs> so I just have to be careful with it. Ah, now tell us about yours. It's finally done. Finally, my Persettis by Heidi Kiermeyer, and it's also in the Harrisville Design yarn, um, the worsted weight. Mine has the red, and it's Fever Dream is the name of the color. Which, do you know your? Talk Radio. Talk Radio, you said. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I wore this to Rhinebeck. It's just a cardigan. It doesn't have any buttons. You could stand up a little bit, I guess. Mm hmm and I'm wearing white underneath to show that there actually is a little bit of a pattern, a design here. Yeah, some yarn overs. It's pretty. But I wore this all day Saturday at Rhinebeck and it was perfectly comfortable. I didn't need a jacket, just wore this blouse, every, and it was perfect all day long. The weather was gorgeous. Oh, nice. So you so, started this in February, right? Yep. Yeah. Took a break over the summer mm. and then about finished four it up months. <laughs> Took about four, maybe five months off. It was an easy knit. It was a nice knit. Yeah. Because the pattern becomes intuitive after you do it for a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the other thing is pillage. There's a little, little bit here. Very little. But I had this on all day with the crossbody bag and rubbing. And in the past sweaters that I've worn where my bag is rubbing the sweater, mm -hmm. I'll have pillage. And especially under the arms and down. This has hardly any. I don't know. Are you mm -hmm. finding that with I, yours I have too? very minimal. Yeah. That's... I forget when I made... It was last spring or something. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a little bit, but it's kind of minimal. And it's very tiny pills mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this on for a bit. Sure. Okay. So, and the only other thing I wanted to say is I, I knit mine at six stitches to the inch, and I think yours was five stitches to right. the inch, right? Right. So it's very, like, mine is uh, real firm, and yours is much more drapey. Mm hmm Yeah. I think the so, stitch pattern, too. With the lace. With all the yarn overs, is, yeah, yeah, makes yeah. it a little bit looser. So It was so, perfectly comfortable, because I thought I needed the holes for the air, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it worked just right. And I did, in the morning, put my um, half and half triangles wrap around my shoulders because it was really chilly. It was yeah, 40 it was cold. degrees and it was all fog in the morning Saturday. But it warmed up quickly, especially when you get into the buildings. <laughs> I saw pictures on Modern Daily Knitting where they showed um, the fog Saturday morning. You could barely Made see it look like... When you were going over the bridge, you couldn't see the, the water. water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, everybody was going over the bridge. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Yeah, so I'm very happy with this sweater. That's great. I know I'll get a lot of wear out of it. Yeah. It seemed to be a little dark at Rhine, dark color at Rhinebeck because everybody was in brights, it seemed. Is that right? Well, a lot of yoke sweaters mm -hmm. and different designs. So mine was a little bit more subdued. Uh huh. But I was comfortable. <laughs> Fun. So. 
Well, I have That's one it. FO. I did another square for my Afghan. Oh. This is square number four. Is that the back side or the <laughs> Here, it's upside down. Here we go. Square number four from Nora's Vintage Afghan. So that is done. Four down, 16 to go. <laughs> That's not bad though. You, you've gotten a lot done. So, That's a big square. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then show us your, what you finished. The only other finished item I have is the sock that I showed. I was at the gusset last time. This is the Arn and Carlos yarn. Nice. I love the design and the yeah, colors. It looks great. Really cute. And I'm actually at the same point <laughs> oh. on the second sock, <laughs> the gusset. So there I'll have go. this finished in a day or two. Uh, yeah, probably. no time flat. And then start another sock. That's great. And I know exactly which one I'm going to do. Ooh. <laughs> I have one other finished object, and this is a hat. That looks nice. I'm calling it the festive hat because it's from the pattern that I'm making my sweater out of. I'll oh, show it. I'll yes. show it to you later. So you're testing the pattern. So this it? is my swatch. Very nice. This is my swatch for the sweater that I'm going to make. And that's the actual yarn. No, is it? Well, let me tell you. Is it? So this it looks the like yarn it. is. What I bought is Bisha Bush. Le Lamb's Wool. We made a trip up to Conversational Threads. We did, yes. Because I knew us. I wanted to make this sweater and I needed yarn for it. So, that so rarely happens for me, but we did it. So, I have two colors of Le Lamb's Wool. One is dark green gray, it's called. So, this at the top is the dark green gray. And then the other one is called beige, and that's this off-white creamy color, beige. And then uh, they didn't have a red to go with it, so what I bought was this Erin Moore Light from the Fiber Company. And I did do use this for the swatch in my hat. I used this yarn. But I discovered that even though the weight and the yardage are similar for these two yarns, the Erin Moore Light was knitting up more sport weight and this was knitting up more DK, mm. even almost worsted weight. Mm. So this, this was very light and because it's sort of at, at the top of the hat, I mean, it's, it looks fine. But I wasn't sure if I was going to put it in the whole circumference of a yoke, it might make a big difference in my gauge. Mm -hmm. So Can you look online and see if this Bish and Boosh has another? I did look online and they do not have any reds at they all. They really don't. They don't. Oh my goodness. Even from their own website, they don't have oh. any reds. So when I talk about the sweater later, I'll tell you what I did. Okay. <laughs> so this is my hat. I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out really cute. It's very nice. So, so I hope now you're going to keep that because it matches your sweater. I hope. Uh, I guess, maybe. You should. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about it yet, if I would keep it or donate it, but I might. <clears throat> so those are all my FOs, and you showed yours. Oh, That's so it. now you can tell us all about oh Ryan Bass. Well, here, first of all, is this year's poster on... That's so pretty. Isn't that neat? Yeah, that's a great photo. I took a or picture a drawing? of all the um, I guess it's a photo. posters for all the years. So I took quite a few pictures that Joy will be posting yeah. at the end, right? Or yeah. I don't know if you're going to intermix or I'll whatever you figure whatever it out. You yeah. Do. Okay, and I do have some pictures of myself wearing this and standing in front of the poster with my I went with my friend Caroline who lives in Binghamton, New York. Um, it was her first time there, and she was completely <laughs> overwhelmed and surprised at, I don't know what word, gobsmacked, I don't know what, but she was really, she enjoyed it. She we both it. enjoyed it. Yeah, good. Tremendously. Of course, the weather was fabulous. Yeah, it was a perfect you couldn't. Day. Oh my goodness, you couldn't ask for anything better. The leaves were 
There were certain trees that were nice, but there were others that were still green. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to see that, but it was beautiful. So we were there. Um, well, Friday we drove up, and we spent the afternoon in the little town of Rhinebeck, which was really nice. Of I course, bet. we went to the yeah. nice shoe store. Did you? Yes. Did you get any shoes no. then? No. <laughs> They didn't have our sizes. They were sold out. We have the popular oh. sizes, I guess. Okay. Eight and eight and a half. But anyway, so then we we stuck around there and had dinner at um, the Tavern Restaurant, right, right in on the main street, right mm. across from Beekman Arms mm. Hotel. Did you have it to worked. have a reservation? Or? No. No. This worked out so perfectly. I think it was a. I don't know what time. It might have been about five, six o'clock. About five o'clock. We walked in. And they said, yes, they had tables. We looked at the menu. We liked the menu. And as I'm standing waiting to be seated, as we're standing there, I look into the bar and all the TVs had the Phillies game on. Oh. So I said, so I said to the hostess, can we sit at that table right there? And it was right under the TV. So I got to see the whole Phillies game. I got to see them win that Friday night. Nice. So it worked out perfectly because I was a little disappointed that I was missing my Phillies games for Ryan Beck, but I got to see that one anyway. So that worked out really well. The only problem was driving back at night was a little bit tough going over the bridge in those back roads because we were staying in Saugerties, and it took us 25 minutes to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that was Friday. And Saturday, we got there at 9 o'clock, well, 8.30 actually, and it was a little chilly, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we sat in the car for a bit. But um, we got right in. It was so crowded. I've heard, I just heard yesterday in one of the podcasts that they estimated 40,000 people were there wow. this week. It was that so crowded. I, I don't, I mean, last year was nice because they had a limited number because of COVID. This year it was crowded. It's really, really crowded. So we started out in the buildings the first day. We kind of walked through everything. What we were going to do, we bumped into a couple of people we know, like Misha from Misha's Obsessions, our friend, and Margie, our friend Margie. And I ran into Corinne from the Woolly Thistle. Oh. She's the owner of the online yarn shop, the Woolly Thistle. So I gave her our card, and she said somehow she's going to connect with us so <laughs> we'll see what happens but I do like her yarn I do and too. she had yeah. her uh I think it's called the vanilla sweater mm, mm -hmm. she had her yeah. vanilla sweater on it's yep. very pretty yep. and that lovely um mosaic cowl neck too oh yeah yeah they really had, nice they've had several like knit alongs and yeah yeah the, the yarn that they post online just looks luscious and then I went in to see in Painted Spring Farm Alpacas, well, Caroline bought her husband alpaca socks, beautiful oh, alpaca socks. But I was talking to Beth Lutz. Um, she's the owner. She's the owner. And I told her we had a podcast, and she, I asked her if she would be interested. So we may, in the future, in the spring, Next a little spring. late spring, she said it's a good time to come to see the babies. So, yeah, that would be fun to do. Maybe we'll have a podcast with her. And she's the same one I bought that uh, alpaca yarn that I showed you last time. Right. Same person. Oh, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Lunch. I was looking forward to that falafel. <laughs> I had it for the first time last year. It was mm -hmm. so good. The yep. stand wasn't there. They had another stand up by the buildings, not by the hill where the cider uh, donuts are being sold. And somebody said that they were selling falafels there, but it wasn't the falafel stand. Mm -hmm. So I had a gyro, gyro, mm -hmm. gyro, however you want to say it. It was excellent. I don't know. But the new thing this year, instead of the fried artichokes, it was fried Brussels sprouts. And the lines were long. From the first thing in the morning, people were eating oh Brussels goodness. sprouts. That's <laughs> different. Pretty funny. We didn't stand in line. They smelled good, but we didn't stand in line. Okay, in the afternoon we just spent walking around. One of the one of the items I had on my list to visit was a booth that made special dyed special yarns for the Technique 
called assigned pooling. And that is, the yarn is dyed in a way that when you get to the color, there's a background color. So in this case, mine is blue, like a blue gray. And when you get to this, the color, like the white in this case and the green speckle, you do a certain stitch. It's almost like a bobble. And you just keep wrapping the yarn around and so forth. And I'll tell you how I know, kind of know this now. And it makes a design. It makes like a flower. It looks like a flower. So I bought the designer for this, uh, these patterns is Don Barker. Her name is Don Barker. So they had right in the walkway, this is in the tent area. Oh, and I should mention that it's Cozy Color Works who's dyeing this yarn for her. One of my favorite vendors. I made a sweater with their yarn, Cozy Color Works from New Jersey. So this is a, quite a long story, <laughs> but anyway, so they they had a big bin of all these this yarn, this assigned pooling yarn, and they had a sample of all of her patterns hanging there oh. with a card, and I have a picture. We'll put that at the end. I could show that with the pattern name, her name, and so forth, and how much yarn you need it. But one of the um, people working the stand did help me and tell me that this this one specifically would make this called Calico by Don Barker and they look like little flowers if you saw it in person they actually look like little flowers when you do that mm -hmm. special stitch and then Caroline decided to buy me a birthday present and they had this one this was a, um, this was one of the sample colors and it was already wound up she said I'm which is fine me but it's like a it's actually the same color as this so I'm going to do the float pattern Again, by Don Barker. It's all her patterns. The float. And this is, I didn't even untie it. It had a little bow on it. Um, it's gray and pink. And that's going to come out with little pink flowers on the shawl. So these are shawls, I should say. These are the float. These are little. Yeah. The float is a uh, 70 wide by 45 inch deep after blocking. It's a simple right triangle shawl. And the calico is, let's see, this is 76 wide by 26 deep. So they're a little bit different. And they do have different stitches on the edges. There's ribbing on the calico. So, later in the afternoon, so that's, that was my, I was thrilled to get that. That's my, that was and my this one is, goal. This feels really nice. It's a double nice. skein. Yeah, it's eight ounces. It's huge. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even say that. And it's it's, it's really beautiful. Hand dye super wash, eight ounces, soft. fingering weight, eleven hundred yards. Later on in the afternoon, I have to connect the story now. We're sitting on the hill. Everybody was gathering. It was about three o'clock, and it was packed. So we found a space on the benches up the all the way at the top of the hill, and we were just watching everything going on. So Caroline had learned about this assigned pooling now. So she saw this woman walking by with a really pretty sweater that had what looked like that same mm -hmm. idea, mm -hmm. the assigned pooling. And she walked by us a couple times, and then she sat down on the bench next to us, and Caroline said, I really want to go over and tell her how much I love her sweater. And it was my colors. It was all in turquoise and teals Ooh. and greens. It was beautiful. Caroline went over, and she said, I really like your sweater. She said, it, it almost looks like what my, my friend just bought at Cozy Color Works. And she says, well, I'm Don Barker. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. Caroline came running over to me and said, that's Don Barker. So, of course, I get up and I go over and I start talking to her. And we have, I'll have, I have pictures of her. So, at the end, so she was sitting knitting something else, which was really pretty. And she had, we found out that she's from Amarillo, Texas. Oh, and I said, well, how did you connect with Cozy Color Works? She said, last year at Rhinebeck, she met them. Exactly remember how they got together. Maybe in the Cozy Color Works booth. I think that's how it was. And she might have been wearing one of her pieces. And they started talk. They just started talking. She said, they became fast friends. Sandy. Okay. Sandy. And Sandy asked her, she said, you know, where are you getting your yarn for this assigned pooling? And I don't know what her response was. I 
So Sammy said, how would you like me to dye the yarn for your patterns? So that's how they got together, the collaboration. Can you imagine? That's awesome. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So then we finished talking and we went to go back to sit on our bench and somebody took our seats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Sandy said, well, just sit right here by me. So I sat down and she said, would you, she said, do you want me to show you how to do this? Oh. So she, she showed me how to do the one stitch I'm going to be doing, I think, on the calico. And um, so at least I have an idea. But it is like moving the stitches back and forth, wrapping them. It's almost like a bobble, but it's not a uh -huh. bobble. Okay. It's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. You just have to keep doing it, wrapping it, to use up that that length of color, that, color. That, that contrast color, to use it up. Mm -hmm. And she said, if it gets too long, she said, just cut it. She said, you could shorten it, do whatever you want with it. So we sat with her for about a half an hour, and she, it, and she just... Showed us how she was. It was so fascinating. Nice. Can you imagine? Wow. This kept happening to us. Because right before that, we went for, I have to have my apple cider from the 4-H club. Yep. Oh my gosh, it was fabulous. I got a hot one for um, Caroline and a cold one for me. And she just loved the hot one. So after I finished the cold one, we were sitting there so long, I said, I'm going for a hot one. <laughs> so I got the hot one. It had a completely different flavor. Mm. It is delicious. Mm. I can't believe mm. it's only $2. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to the coffee, I think it's called Taste Buds or something, they're $4. But anyway, I like the 4-H <laughs> club. Yeah. So we were sitting on the at, on the picnic. They, were, they have picnic tables there. And we were f kind of facing the other picnic table. And these women, the, a few women were sitting there. One, I think, was a teacher because... People were coming to her, and she had, like, all her booklets and stuff. I don't know who she was. But the other woman sitting next to her had a whole bag of samples, and people kept coming over to her, and she was showing them her samples. And we're sitting there watching all this happening, thinking, thinking, who is this person? And then I noticed, sitting across the table from her, we found out later it was her sister, and she had on one of those butterfly papillon. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a shawl, though. It was a poncho. Oh, so, all of a sudden, she's rushing around, and she's saying, where are my keys? And she's saying to her sister, I can't find my car keys, and they're going around. And Caroline, <laughs> Caroline's, we're, we're both sitting there watching, like, well, do you, did you put it in, you know, is it in here? Is it in there? We're kind of saying things. And then she found them, and we're clapping, and we're just laughing. And she introduced herself. So, who is she? She's the designer of the Butterfly Papillon oh. shawl. So, she gave us her card. This is her card. That's a massive card, <laughs> isn't it? And it's, um, her name is Marin Melkier. She's from Vermont. And the name of that poncho is a flutter poncho. And the butterfly papillon shawl is that famous shawl. You know, she doesn't have the picture of it on here. Isn't that odd? But I'm sure some of you are aware. So it's Marin J. Knits is the name of her company. So she, she proceeded to pull everything out of her bag, all her samples, and show us everything. <laughs> Wow, nice. And kind of told us, and I said, you know, I always wanted to make that shawl. I think it's beautiful. I said, but it's all short rows. I said, I'm not a big fan of short rows. And she says, oh, they're really easy. I have tutorials. Oh, and that's right. Don Barker said she has tutorials in her pattern, too, for her stitch. So that was interesting. How fun. Caroline and I were just laughing because we just kept bumping into all these people. We never, we didn't know who they were. And now we met new people. That's fun. I went into this barn. We did see Nancy from um, Tika, Bags. Tika Bags. She was there. She was right across from Custom Color Works. I mean, Cozy Color Works. But she was busy, and her, her husband wasn't there. So she she put a post up saying about how busy she was. Like she was she really was busy. Crazy. She had lines. Like I kind of just stuck in and said, "Hi, Nancy. How are you doing? Joy and Donna said hello, and that's about it." She, oh yeah. <laughs> I could tell, so I just, we just left. So, in one of the barns, I came across this little stand, Will You Farm, and it's from Vermont. I'll show the card. I tried to get all the cards, and oh, I had my finger on it, wait a minute. <laughs> Will You Yarns. Okay. The first thing I spied there was these cute little ornaments. She had a Christmas tree. Look at how cute these are. And they're made with, like, um, roving, uh -huh. whatever. <laughs> so I bought quite a few of these for my 
Nieces. So it's like nieces a, and nephews and stuff. Kind of. It's a, just a little snowman. A cross between a snowman and an angel. It's sort so of. cute. Yeah. Look at the faces. The faces are adorable. So I got quite a few of these. I gave Caroline one. I said, you have to have one of these. They're just so cute. Oh, they are cute. They're adorable. They're all different colors. What color do you like, Joy? <laughs> I don't know. Pick one. <laughs> it's so hard. Maybe this one. Okay. Thank you. Put it on your tree. I will. He's so cute. I know. I just love them. And then she also had, I always liked these. I always wanted to buy one of these. Yeah. These felted pumpkins yeah. with the locks. I think they're so cute. That's appropriate. And then I spied, well, and then she had, I, I just love lavender sachets to put in my yarn. They had that too. Ooh, I can smell it. I know, because mm. I scrunched it up mm. a little. I love the way it smelled. And then I saw this as I was <laughs> leaving the stand. Feel this. Nice. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So they have, this is from their farm in Leiden, Vermont. It's a two-ply light worsted, 90% cormo, 10% black fine wool. So, I know, I already know. I want to make mitts, fingerless mitts with this. Mm. Yeah, that's Because really I think this will be nice on the hands, isn't squishy, that? Yeah. It's just beautiful. Very nice. I had to get some kind of natural. So they're from Vermont? Vermont. Linden, Vermont. So that was that stand. When we went into the barns and we first got there, I went to Miss Babs, of course. They had three lines and three registers this year. Hey there. And I really wanted, I like to buy their Rhinebeck color every year. Mm -hmm. So I, I looked at the Rhinebeck colors, they were there, and I thought, I can't, I can't stand in these lines. <laughs> so we went back in the afternoon, of course they were sold out. But, and I said, I guess you're sold out of the Rhinebeck color. She said, yeah, we are. She said, but if you come back first thing in the morning, we have another batch that we put out for, sa for, for Sundays. Sunday. We save it for Sunday. So that's a, that's nice. That's a secret there, a little yes. trick there. Yeah. So I got the Rhinebeck colorway. Oh, and this is, they give you a little, a nice little thank you card, Miss Babs, with a stitch marker attached. A little stitch marker. Let's see, it's just a cute little ring. Here's their information on the back. Miss Babs. And this is their color. It's so pretty. It's called Harvest Plenty, Rhinebeck 2022. So this one is Avon. It's a fingering yarn, and this is 85 merino wool, 15 silk, 490 yards. Feel that. Oh, merino and silk, huh? Isn't that nice? That looks That's really be a neck fine. Something. How many yards something. did you say? 490. Yeah. It so I'm going to really do a neck light. something with that. Really light. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah, it has it's nice different. oranges and yeah. Hand dyed in Mountain City, Tennessee. Really pretty. And then I got, now this is a Harvest Plenty also, and this is called Tarte Fingering Yarn. But this is 75% superwash merino wool, 15 nylon, and 10, 10 cell. So this will be my socks. Oh, that's the next These pair. These are my next pair on? of socks. Yep. Yep. Fun. But this will nice. be a, a neck scarf because it has the silk in it. Yeah. And Caroline actually bought this. And she bought, they had, they had all different types of this um, Rhinebeck colorway. And she got the one with cashmere in it. She's going to make socks. Socks? Cashmere. It's cashmere, nylon, and superwash. Wow. <laughs> so. Her feet are going to be happy. I know. <laughs> Bead biz. This is, this, is, this is from Friday, I think, too. I just, this is where I buy all my beads usually. Mm -hmm. Last time I bought them was in the New Jersey, at the New Jersey yes. Sheep and Fiber mm -hmm. Festival. And they have a lot, they have a wonderful stand. So I bought quite a few. I can take that kind of stuff. Were you running out of beads? Yes, I am. Oh. Because okay. I've been putting them in my shawls. So I kind of got yeah. this neutral. I know I've used this in the past. And I really like this neutral. I was going to say, they look 
these colors look familiar. Crystalline. I know. Well, I know it's in my stash. <laughs> of course. And these are like, these are really neat. These are green lined crystals. That's why I like And this is bronze lined. They're different. They're yeah. really, they're not just your basic. Yeah. And these are the um, ones that are sliced, slanted. I oh. think you use mm -hmm. these. And they had a sample, they had a lot of sample shawls with the beads in them. And this they put along the edge of the shawl. It almost looks like little picos. Oh. So that's what I'm going to use these for. I thought that was a great idea. This is like pearls, ivory. Anyway, so that's my, oh, this was funny. I had to stand in line for quite a while to pay for these, even though there was only one person in front of me, because she had this big basket full Finally, when they were halfway through the basket, they did bring somebody else out with them, gave them another little device, charge device. And here this woman owned a yarn shop, a shop somewhere, and she was buying all the beads for her shop. And she, <laughs> she had a whole... <laughs> That's... Yes. Odd. Okay. And she had a nice selection. They had every color you can imagine. Wow. And then another one of our favorite places I know you like is Into the World. Beautiful sock yarn. That's Gorgeous. for sure. Gorgeous. So, okay, so this is the Rhinebeck, their Rhinebeck colorway. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh. Yes. That's and they beautiful. just called it Rhinebeck. And this is their four ply, 75 superwash merino, 25 nylon, Paku sock. Paku. 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 It's this. This is what I got last time. Pukaku. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Four hundred. Yeah. Four hundred sixty yards. But look at these colors. Oh my gosh. I think that's so beautiful. Yes. And I really like oh. the socks I made out of that. I really like yes. them. Yes. This is definitely. And they're socks. light. They're lightweight. So like even on warmer days, they're not too hot yeah. to wear. It feels yeah. great. And then I I got another one. Captain tight pants. That's the one I have. Is this the one Captain you have? Tight, yeah, that's the same colorway. <laughs> Captain tight pants. I love it. Yeah. I just love it. And it's the same thing. 75, 25, 4 ply, the kaku, whatever. I even almost wore them today. <laughs> I love these. These are great sock yes. colors, I think. Yes. Ah. Yeah. And they just felt so good. I had to get them. Their stand, when you, when you walk into their stand, it's just so pretty. The mm -hmm. colors are just so pretty. You mm -hmm. can't resist it. And it's very hard to choose. It is. Because a lot of them are very subtly different yeah. from each other. Yeah, they are. I knew I wanted the Rhinebeck color because I saw that. And then the, just this one just stood out to me. That's mm. funny. It's the same one you bought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do I have left? Oh, and then something that I buy every time I go to Rhinebeck, except last year because mm, they weren't there. It. I go to um, Got Soap. And, of course, she has wonderful soaps, but I didn't buy any soaps. This is from Branchville, New Jersey. Oh, I didn't know she was from New Jersey. Oh, Branchville, New Jersey. So, I always get, I just love this, Moth Beware. It smells wonderful. It's cedar chips. I didn't open it. Cedar chips and just has the best fragrance. It's kind of like a cinnamon. It's like fall. Yeah, I love it's a it's a nice like clean smell almost. And it, it smells like cedar too. Right? Yeah, cedar. Yeah. So I have several bags of these in my yarn room, and I really I like that. Between the lavender and this, I have my room smells really pretty. And this time I bought the Moth Beware Refresher Oil to put in. And I bought these. She had these. I just thought they were great for a dollar each, because my friend sends me. Lavender from her yard in Arizona and for a while there I was making I crocheted a couple of little bags to put them in to put the lavender in But when I as soon as I saw these muslin, I thought this is perfect mm -hmm. I could put the lavender in here. So I got a few of these. Well, you could put the cedar chips in there, too, right? And nice I was looking for something yeah. So that was that that's so funny because we never buy her soap. We always just get the uh, cedar chips. I know. Her soap is really nice, though. But I ran into podcast groups that I are my favorites. The one is Needles at the Ready, Ray and Kevin. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I have pictures with them, too, that you'll see at the end. And they gave me stickers and a button. Nice. And a pen. 
oh my gosh, they were so nice to talk to. So as I was talking with them, we were trying to take a selfie. They said, you have to be in the picture with us. They were so cute. Oh, and their sweaters they wore. Oh, you'll see in the picture at the end. They had their Rundeck sweaters on. Beautiful. So we were trying to take pictures. And then he calls over to somebody, and I didn't see. Is there Kim? And I look. Here, it's the knitting posse. Kim and Laura and Kate. So the three of them came over and they took our pictures. So then I took my pictures with them and we were talking because Kate had on, not Kate, Kim had on a sweater in daylights, made oh. in daylights, mm -hmm. a pullover, just a simple crew neck raglan pullover. And she was saying how much she loved knitting with the yarn. So we were talking about that and they, and they both, they all had beautiful sweaters on, um, but they didn't finish the Rhinebeck sweaters because they usually do, I think they were doing... The co one color. One so color, we talked with them. Yeah. yeah. So we, I, we, I talked with them for a bit. Caroline wasn't there at the moment. I think she was getting a coffee, so she missed this whole thing. But <laughs> she doesn't know them anyway. Mm -hmm. They're my, they're two of my favorite podcasts. And then this week they put out their Ryan Beck podcast. Yes, the and Knitting Posse. Well, that's another thing. I handed Kim my card, our card for the podcast. I happened to find my cards. They were in my bag that I took to Rhinebeck last year. Oh. I found a few cards in the bag, so I took them along this year. Yeah. So I handed a couple out. I gave one to Corinne from Wooly Thistle, too. So I gave one to, to Kim, and she said, oh, we're going to have to check your podcast out. So I'm watching the podcast the, uh, the other day, and right in the beginning, they started talking about, it was all about Rhinebeck, they were talking about people they met. And they said, Joy and Janet from Quail's Knitting Nest, we have to watch your podcast. And then later on in the show, they were showing the cards, and they showed our card again. Yeah, yeah. They're so nice. Oh, my goodness. They're just so nice. Yeah, they did a lot of shout-outs for a lot oh, of Oh, they people. did. Yeah. They did. They had a great podcast. They didn't have pictures, though. I was surprised. Well, she Not said everybody. she was probably too busy because she said she was writing they everything were. down because yeah. she knew she couldn't remember. And it they all. were talking. They were talking. They were they were talking. To everybody. The hill was so jammed. Speaking of podcasts, I just want to mention this one. It's called Nitty Natty. K N I T T Y N A T T Y. Nitty Natty. If you want to see a nice review of Rhinebeck, mm. a video review oh, of Rhinebeck, that. she did it in two parts because on Friday she went to Cake Palooza first. Then she went to Woolen, Woolen Folk. Folk, so she has pictures. And they, she and her husband stayed in a cabin right where they do the Woolen Folk, oh. right by the Hudson River. It's really interesting. Nice. And then the next day, she has the video, of course, of Ryan Beck. And Sunday, it's really, she did a great job. She did I one think, last on year, that. too, I remember. Yes. She's very good. She has somebody taking her pictures. Her, I don't know if it's her oh. husband or somebody yeah. who's really good with the camera. Nice. Nice. I'm not. <laughs> but she it's an excellent, excellent review. If you want to learn everything that goes on in Rhinebeck those three days, watch that. It was so crowded. I have pictures of the crowd. <laughs> you could see oh, Andrea Mowry. Oh, she was everywhere. Her sw okay, here her sweaters, her Alpen Glow sweaters were everywhere. Everywhere. That and was the sweater. And our friend Kathy made one and wore it up to Rhinebeck. I didn't see her either. Andrea was there with her husband and her children. And every time I saw her, somebody had her stopped and surrounded. I have pictures of her too, though. Um, Caroline loved her sweater. I think she wants to make it. Oh, Caroline went up to the Finger Lakes on Sunday. And she's, <laughs> now that she knows something about the knitting and all this, she saw a girl wearing the Alpen Glow. Oh, <laughs> Just in the wild. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just like, wait, I know that sweater. <laughs> so the mount, the mount, the hill was packed when everybody got together with Andrea's sweaters and everybody was taking pictures. They were beautiful. Everyone was nicer than the next, really. And the other sweater that I really want to make that I saw so many of, oh my gosh, so many beautiful versions, is this Avena by Jennifer Steingast. Nice. This was the sweater, too. Yeah, this year's sweater. Yes. Yeah. It was beautiful. One woman had blue, but all of these spirals coming down were in the color-changing yarn, and it was mm. blues and greens. Mm. Oh, my goodness. It was beautiful. It was... Yeah, that's actually a great pattern for that. It is. For a gradient like that. 
because then it's all about the gradient because the patterning is very very simple, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. But so it would show off mm -hmm. a nice gradient like that. Everybody looked nice in that sweater. And Saturday night, we by accident found a wonderful restaurant and hotel actually. We went to Sagerties, downtown Sagerties, in our hotel. It was all knitters, I have to say. So for in, at breakfast time, there were all knitters at breakfast. We sat with two women from Indiana, and they told us that they had a really nice meal at this place in Sagerties. Well, when we went Saturday night, it was closed. I pulled into a parking lot, and I looked across, and I saw this big brick building. And it looked like there was a, a terrace on the back with people sitting at tables eating. So I, we said, well, let's go across the way and see what that's like. So we drove over and it's called the Tavern Restaurant, but it's Diamond Mills is the name of it. It used to be an old paper mill mm -hmm. that they um, tore down mostly and then rebuilt. And it's right by the river. There's a waterfall and the bridge is right there. Mm -hmm. Nice setting. And we drove past and we saw that there was a hotel too. What a nice place. I have a picture of, the, of that too. Really nice restaurant, nice menu. A lot of the knitters were coming in and they had a terrace you could sit outside. It was a little chilly. They couldn't get the torches to light, so it was a little chilly out there. But the funny thing is, this is really funny. There was uh, there were glass doors. Where we were seated, I could see through the glass doors, and it looked like it was a private party. There were balloons and people sitting at tables and stuff. So about five minutes after we got there, I started hearing Elvis music. <laughs> and then he steps over to the glass door so there was an Elvis impersonator at this birthday party and you could hear him through the doors into the dining room and the waiter came over and goes is that disturbing you? I said no I said it's fun we're being entertained it was a little bit muted well actually it was a lot muted I think I'm sure compared to what he was in there with his microphone and all the women had their silk scarves on and he had his white scarf and, and then all the I was wondering why they all had these aviator sunglasses on oh my on. gosh <laughs> people so then he just kept playing song after song oh my goodness and they were all getting they were dancing and it was fun <laughs> <laughs> so while we were eating dinner we had a show <laughs> well that's great so i think i talked enough such a good trip. oh my goodness we had a great time it was so much when i watched the knitting posse they mentioned it and then i watched kevin and ray's review last night their dog tarquin passed away the day before on a Thursday. So they didn't know if they were going to go to Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. And they were in the po podcast lounge at Woolen Folk. Mm -hmm. But they went and they said that was the best thing they could have done. So I feel very sorry for them. So I have one on the needles. My work in progress. Which is my festive yoke. It's called Festive Sweater Cal Pullover. Festive Sweater K-A-L Pullover. And it's by Skandier Knits. So she released this pattern a, a year ago, last December, and it's a year-long knit-along, oh. which will be ending this December. So this is my yoke so far. Wow, you got a lot done. That's pretty. So what'd you do with the color? I could see there's something else with it, or something. So something's different. Since I couldn't, since I decided not to use this red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look what a close match that is. It is. I have leftover from another sweater that I made. Do you remember which sweater I made in this red color? No, I don't. This is my cabled St. Bridget. Wow. And I used Green Mountain Spinnery Music mm -hmm. is the yarn in the color Brick House. Oh. And it was the right gauge to wow. match with the... So you yeah, had that in your stash. That's well, great. I had it left over That's from. That's great. And I have just enough for like the yoke. And I'm debating if I want to do like a, a bracelet or a thing at the bottom. Because that's not part of the pattern. But I might add a, add that in. So, so I have just enough. I'm doing the yoke in all the colors. And then the sleeves in the body are going to be the green. The green is my main color. And I think, can you believe it? Oh, no. <laughs> I dropped a stitch. A, I dropped oh. a stitch here. Oh, well. <laughs> At least I found it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's for sure. I'll have to tuck that in yeah. later. So, oh, I, pretty. 
Does it have short rows in the back too? It does yeah, have it short does. rows in the back. Mm -hmm. So the, the front neck is very narrow and then the back neck has like an, uh, an added uh, about an inch and a half short row to raise the, the neck. I did a provisional cast on and I'm going to pick up the stitches and then knit the ribbing in. Mm, that feels nice. That's pretty. And I just love... So how... You you should be almost finished with the yoke, are you? Pretty much. I'm going to... I think I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the neck and then I'm going to block it and see how it is. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it's long enough. It looks... I think it is. It might... You know, just never know, right? I mean, my, according to my gauge with the hat, I should have finished all of this at about seven inches. Oh. But this is now closer to ten. That's, <laughs> I, yeah, I think you're ready. So, <laughs> I don't know what happens with gauge, but it's okay. And That's it's cute. You have reindeer and snowflakes uh -huh. and trees. I like yep, that. Yep. That's exactly what I wanted. Really pretty. Wow, I can't believe you have that done already. Oh my god, This was so much fun to knit. It was like knitting the swancho, you know? Yeah. You just keep going and going, and it's so much fun. You're changing colors, and you're changing patterns, and it just, like, flies off That's your really needles. pretty. And what's your gauge on that? Five stitches to the inch. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's supposed to be six. Look how nice. So you washed and blocked this hat, right? Uh -huh. Look how nice that lays. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely is going to stretch a little. Yeah. I could see that it's going to flatten out. Right. Yeah, because it's all, like... Yeah, bunched up and whatever. And it barely fits on my needle. But So I'm excited. Wow. I can't believe you've all that done already. Plus the hat. It just oh flew. It just flew. Wow. And now I'll be just doing plain stockinette and green so I can watch all the... I can catch up on all, yeah, the, all the podcasts, yeah. All the things I haven't been doing because I couldn't really watch TV and work on this at the same time. Jim, Jim came into the room the other day and he's like, did you run out of knitting podcasts to watch? <laughs> I said, no, I'm just working on something I can't. That's good. <laughs> I can't watch and strand at the same time. <laughs> wow. Oh, the only thing I wanted to mention is that Rhinebeck on Sunday was really quiet. Especially compared to Saturday, but it was quiet. It was nice to walk around. Mm -hmm. And that's when we did most of the shopping because mm -hmm. we were able to get into everything. Mm -hmm. So one of the podcasts said, I should, we shouldn't let the secret out because <laughs> we <laughs> don't, don't want everybody to Sunday. come on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really nice walking around on Sunday. You, know, you didn't have to stand in long lines for food mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, Well, everybody, enjoy your fall knitting. It's supposed to be cooler I think after these couple of days yeah warm a couple of days yeah. and then getting cold again oh I know I have a question for the okay our audience so I'm using this biche bouche le lambs wool for my festive sweater do you know what that means biche bouche no so tell me in the comments below tell me what does it mean le biche bouche now, I did look it up online, but you can't really always trust what you okay. learn online. I thought somebody so, won the podcast, that would have was, but I don't remember. So what it said was, Bish, Bish is a female deer, hmm. and Bush is firewood. Oh. Now, I don't know. So if you know, please let us know. Put it down in the comments. What does it mean? And if it does mean deer and firewood, like... What's the deal with the name? Like, where does that come from? Why is it called that? Yeah. And where is this from? This yarn? So the company is based in France. Oh, in France. But the yarn is sourced from Scotland. Oh. Made in the UK, it says. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. So let us know in the comments and um, like and subscribe. And I have to say one thing. What's that? Go Phillies! Oh. <laughs> They're the in the World Series. They're in the World Series. Oh yeah. my gosh, they're our team. I watched all the games this weekend. It was wonderful. Yes. Okay, everybody, have fun knitting. Enjoy the fall. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful out there. Winter will be here too soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.